somebody who loves words and loves etymology, the history of phrases and words, the reality is that something being the new black is not, this has nothing to do with black people. It's a fashion term. Being gay, I know. Uh, it is, it means, because black was the staple color for, for designers. And so something being the new black is the new end thing. So gray is the new black. Purple is the new black. So that, that's a phrase that is often used to mean the new end thing. And so I read the question, or is gay the new black, meaning is gay the new fad. And so the reality is it's not a fad. There's nothing faddish about it. You are who you are. I think that people are born with a certain orientation, and that's how they're oriented, which is what it means, which is why it's not uh, a sexual preference. I call it sexual orientation, because I believe that's the way people are born. And so that's my read of the, the question. Is gay the new black, meaning is gay the new fad? Is this something, is, are more, more people coming out because it's the in thing to do? Are kids coming out younger because it's the end thing to do? That's the way I look at the question. And so the answer is no. I think people are coming out earlier because they realize that it's, they are not doing anything wrong. They are who they are. And if they are a person with morals and values and who lives right and, and tries to educate themselves and be involved in their community, uh, then I think that kids feel comfortable. As long as kids uh, can be safe in school and safe in their neighborhoods and encouraged to be contributing citizens. And I think that uh, kids are coming out younger because they think it's okay and safe to do, but also the right thing to do to be who they are and not hide and lie um, and, and create a whole other series of problems, which is why I chose to be out uh, and not be outed, uh, to be authentic, and which is why I think that uh, my, uh, my authenticity and my truth-telling is why I was elected. Um, one of the reasons, and, and why I was the top vote-getter, uh, because people uh, had already known of my orientation, I was very clear about it, but that was never and what never will be, the, that's, who, that's who I am, that's part of who I am. But they realized my qualifications as a candidate, and what I brought to the table, and my contributions to this community, and so I think that's why I was chosen. So to answer your question, uh, is gay the new black? Hell no. <laughs> Good evening. First of all, I want to give honor and give recognition uh, to Almighty God. Uh, the question is gay the new black? I'd have to say no. I have to say uh, emphatically, no. Now, first, I want to say that gay people are in our family, they're in our communities, they are our uncles, our aunts, our children, our next door neighbors. Uh, they're part of our community. And as being part of our community, we should love them and we should embrace them. However, however, the gay agenda does not and cannot supersede the agenda for black people as a whole, as far as human rights, and as far as economic uh, empowerment. Can you define the I'm, gay agenda? And, and, I'm very, and I'm very concerned, hold on, Charles. Okay, but I still, I still oh, Hold on, Charles, we, 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 no, we, I know. I know, it takes a minute to get out of your journalism mode, but yeah. we got this. But I, but I just, I, I, All right. I, still, I, I hear you, I Charles. love you. I love you. I love Charles. And we're going to get through this. Go right ahead, Minister. This should be, I don't want anyone to be, this is a personal thing. No, no, I'm not taking it personally. I just want to. Charles, Charles, hold on, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm very concerned. Mr. President. I'm very I am very concerned, and I want to be—I want to keep it real. Are you I'm very Mr. President, Mr. President, I'm very concerned about the number of sisters in our community who cannot find a black man to marry, a black man to be a father of their children. I am very, very concerned about that. I don't want to offend anyone. I, I, I want to reiterate it once again. Uh, gays are in our community. I have a, a cousin, and he's gay. And uh, I believe he was born gay. I, 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 I mean, two years of age, 
I started saying, man, I think he's, he's gay, but I love him. He's part of my family. I'm not going to harm him. I'm not going to let him be called names or discriminated against. I'm not going to let anyone else do it. But I want to be perfectly clear. I'm very concerned about what I see going on in the community. I believe we are being socially engineered and manipulated into uh, a lifestyle that in many ways is hurting our community. We have so many sisters out here who have almost no chance, no hope of finding a man. They've some got two boys, others got three boys, others got four, and it is wrecking the community. The socioeconomic effects of not having sufficient number of black men to marry, to go with, to love, to, to grow together with the system is devastating our community. All right, thank you so much, Minister. If we can go to Reverend Sheffield so we can yes. stay with on our schedule. Because this is going to be a great discussion. So we want to keep it moving. Reverend Sheffield. I don't think I'm going to say anything that will cause child to interrupt me. I think I was looking at uh, is gay the new black in a different way in the context of the historical oppression and uh, relegation and subjugation and discrimination uh, just because of who they are. I mean, we as African Americans are discriminated against because of the color of our skin. And people who, some say, alternative lifestyle or because of their gender preference are discriminated against simply because of that choice. In that context, I can see how it could be considered to be new black in terms of now who it is. Uh, that people in this country love to hate just because of who they are. Uh, to me, that doesn't mean it rises to the same level as the agenda of the Civil Rights Movement. But one of the interesting things, and I don't know if, if you can appreciate this, um, but I have this conversation in my church all the time because i found that there's some people in my church who are heterosexual whores, um, who have slept with all kinds of people, but then I have gay people in my church who have one partner and yet there was something more immoral than this person who's very adulterous and having all kinds of relationships with other folks. So um, the other thing I want to say is that I also have an alternative high school. I, my eyes have really been open to this greatly. Um, you can say it might be the new black uh, brother Malik because in my school probably 70% of my students, uh, female and male, are gay. Um, and for a variety of reasons, but the reality is that they're still human beings, they're still God's children, and I understand the agony that they go through being discriminated against just because of who they are. Now, that, as a pastor, that's been, I think, is morally right. I don't have to embrace homosexuality myself in terms of my own biblical tenets, but I also understand that from a civil rights perspective, while it does not rise to the level of discrimination as African Americans or females, or any other people who are necessarily left out of the marketplace because of color or gender, whatever, that in many ways to them that experience is very similar to ours. All right, Frankie. All right. Now this 